there's also uh, this really sharp noise which sounds like somebody sticking a sword through your ear in that same section and that's probably an upside down swept symbol and I couldn't find a better translation for swept I'm afraid but I mean that the symbol is placed upside down and that you use the same bow that violists use and then you use that against the edge of the symbol and that will create some resonance inside the symbol and that sound from from that that friction that's the shock sound you hear we will get to that when we do the audio there's a ratchet of course uh, and also a tambourine afterwards uh, briefly after the uh, softer section and there's also temple blocks at the end of the softer section um, when Keith has, has that gentle increase of dynamics block block we'll get to that when we have the audio I can't really do temple blocks um, and maybe you have temple blocks of, of course uh, visually as well so they're just hollow uh, wooden caskets that's interesting uh, third impression less interesting instrumentation you of course now have synth 1 and 2 instead of synth and bar synth uh, you have a vocoder which is of course a different instrument because you need to speak in it you need to blow in it in order to help get the sound with your keyboard um, of course again the hand of the drums the bass guitar and the vocals you can also categorize these instruments uh, which is what I call instrumentation subdivided uh, we'll just go through this very quickly so when we have the synths they are electronic keyboard instruments seems fairly obvious right no moving parts so electronic not electric the Hammond organ is an electric magnetic keyboard instrument really interesting how it works it works with um, magnetism and then via induction an electrical current is created and that being enhanced creates your uh, eventual sound which is very round and you have no upper tones because of the way it's created and then you can add them with different tone wheels you should look it up it's very interesting um, then of course the piano is both an acoustic string instrument because there's strings inside and it's a keyboard instrument because you play on it with keys um, then there's the electric string instruments because the bass guitar and the guitar are uh, yeah there's something wrong with the spelling that should have been yeah <laughs> never mind that so they're of course both electrically enhanced but you have moving parts so they're electric not electronic vocals uh, definitely an instrument, right? Human voice. Percussion instrument is the drums then, of course, because you hit it, so it's percussion. Ideophone, we've already discussed that the cowbell uh, does not resonate as a whole. Um, yeah, sorry, the cowbell does resonate as a whole. Uh, the tambourine doesn't, but it's nevertheless uh, noted as an ideophone, probably for the simple reason that it's not a membrane of foam, because there's no membrane. And the gong, of course, resonates as a whole. Um, furthermore, uh, in the second impression, there's the membrano phones, which is the ten bellies, of course, the drums having the sheets, so clearly that the sheet uh, has the resonance and produces the sound, therefore, the ten bellies are membrano phones. And then the clavies uh, resonate as a whole, therefore, ideophone. Uh, the maraca is not a membrano phone, and therefore, ideophone. Flexitone, the entire metal sheet plate resonates as a whole, therefore, ideophone. Same for the symbol. Um, the ratchet and having no membrane of course ideophone and then the temple blocks of course resonate as a whole and the air in inside also resonates so they're of course ideophone and why are they no wind instruments even though there's air resonating in there because they're struck with the mallets yeah. so then it becomes percussion and automatically it can't be wind um, a third impression you also have the uh, vocoder which is of course electronic because no moving parts keyboard instrument because keys and now comes the interesting part and you blow in it right so in that I would say it's a blast instrument because you do blow in it in order to create the sound you have of course inside your your oscillators right you you low frequency oscillator your LFO right and your high frequency oscillator uh, and your filters so it's all electronic there but you also blow in it. If you don't blow, you get no sound. You can press keys however much you want, right? You don't get a sound. So it's a blowing instrument. Well, it's not a wind instrument, but blast instrument translated to English uh, as a category of musical instruments would become wind instrument. A wind instrument is defined because of the uh, vibrating uh, column of air, which does not exist in the vocoder, of course, because it's only transmitted. 
and, and influences the signal which is already there. So that's interesting. So it's not a wind instrument, but it is a blast instrument. If you wish to debate me on that, that's, I think, very interesting that you could call it the one but not the other, even though they're actually the same in a sense because of definition. So that's fun. Well, I've also put down here the instrumental sections and the tutti sections, excluding percussion and types of synth. Uh, synths. I'm not going into this uh, very much. Instrumental sections should be very clear when there's no vocals, so just look at the bass and you will note, oh, in between those bars, the point where Greg Lake starts singing. So that makes a lot of sense, right? Well, auto vocoder, um, debatable. Tutti sections, however, on the other hand, um, is different, right? So in the first impression, tutti would mean that you have the piano and you have the Hammond and you have the synth and you have the guitar, the bass guitar, the vocals and the drums, right? And in the second impression, it would mean you have the synth, the Hammond, the bass guitar and the drums. And the fifth, in the third impression, it would mean that you have the drums and the Hammond organ and the synth and the vocals and the bass guitar. So that means that you have all the instruments excluding percussion and types of synths. And you will notice that you only have two moments when that occurs in the second impression and only three in the third impression and only two actually in the first impression. So that occurs very rarely. So despite there being a lot of instruments, they have divided them very nicely uh, in order to create an interesting composition that can entertain people for 30 minutes, right? So that's very interesting. And what's also interesting is if you look at this, you will find similarities to when the instrumental sections occur and when the tutti sections occur. So the instrumental section, so the tutti section, for example, here, occurs at bar 231, which is fairly, tr through 246, which is fairly uh, close to uh, 256 from when uh, the instrumental section occurs in the G part. Right, and then that occurs till 296, uh, and then again from 297 you get another 2D section. So that's very closely related, same for the other impressions. So that's interesting, I think it's a coincidence, but it's very interesting nevertheless. Then the form, of course, uh, we already discussed this, there's multiple solos and there's multiple instruments, so Carnival 9 is a concerto. Um, because the middle part, the second impression is very much about the piano and being accompanied by others. I think you could say it's a piano concerto. That's an interesting statement. We could have a discussion on that as well, perhaps afterwards. Uh, but I think we can call it a piano concerto. Now, there are general differences, similarities between the impressions. I'm going to skip that because we don't have a lot of time. Um, ELP9, uh, again, my project ensemble which performed the piece is called ELP9 because we were performing Carnival 9 from ELP. Very simple name, actually. Um, I'm going to discuss, as regards form, our own section division form schema, which is important um, for you to understand what I'm talking about, so that when I refer to the A section of the first impression, you will know what I'm talking about. Um, so we divided the first impression in A through G, um, and the second in A through E, and the third in A through D. Um, I think this is the last slide, too. So I can just move to the audio and let you listen to what that's actually about, those different sections. Uh, let's see. So we'll have the different sections. So this is first impression. A part starts from the beginning. And then you get the first two couplets of singing. section and also note that the synthesizer here begins with three notes which are portato like I said it's the articulation so they're pushed put down widely next to each other one one wow 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 and then you hear the legato where he combines the final notes of his motive <laughs> So 
that's interesting. And it's not in the sheet music, but it's clearly there. So that's the different articulation besides the capital in the piece. Uh, so this is the B section. And then we move on to the C section, which is, of course, the famous section with the singing. <laughs> section is with the where the guitar starts the e section then is from our famous part the second part of the first impression welcome back my friends to the show that never ends you already know that part the f section starts where the organ solo starts and the g section starts with the drum break which then moves together on soon gypsy queen and a glaze of vaseline while performing guillotine what is seen what is seen which is of course where the singing introduces the final motive, which also refers back to the C section if you listen to the general composition. Um, second impression then of course starts with the A part. And then the B part is the synthesizer solo. So this is the B part. to hear these very, very rarely occurring quadruples, the anthrometrical figure, the tuples right now in a bit as well. Now listen, now you will get to do 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 so that's where you have the quadruple. So that's the only author tuple in the entire piece. So that's very interesting I thought. So this is the, the B part. The silent, creepy atmosphere in the middle, the second impression then is the C part. The piano solo afterwards being the D part. And the ending of course refers back to the beginning of the second impression and that's why we have this the E part. We have some kind of a basic a, B, A structure, the A, B, C, D, E. We move on to the A part of the third impression. The B part is where the organ solo starts. This is the B part. And when the dynamic crashes in, you can hear that here. So it's much softer now, much, much silent, more silent. So this is the C section. Now you will listen and you will find the increasing dynamics as well while we're listening to this. So listen louder. brief idea of where the sections are hopefully if not it does not matter much I shall not refer to them a lot <laughs> 